technology doesn't stand still. And that's true when we talk about the Eurofighter Typhoon. I'm going to talk now to Paul Smith, who's a Typhoon pilot, but is also the air crew advisor for the Typhoon program with BAE Systems. Paul, hello, welcome to the FIM program. We're looking here at where we are with Typhoon. Can you just explain what we can see here on this wall? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we're looking at here is the, the vision through a pilot's helmet of the Striker helmet. Now, so Striker is in, currently in service in Syria and Iraq, uh, and the guys are using it to, uh, to target ISIS, and it very effectively shortens the, the kill chain. So just by looking out the window, the pilot can see the enemy using the aim queue, can designate the target, and very quickly the laser pod automatically sluices to that position. And so rather than minutes to target the, the enemy, you're now looking at seconds, and that's really going to save uh, coalition lives, whether that's the Peshmerga or the uh, Iraqi uh, friendly forces on the ground. So that's striker technology as, it's, as it uses now. Actually, what we're looking at here um, uh, on the uh, release is some of the future weapons, so such as STB-1 and brimstone weapon, which is in flight test right now at Wharton. So these extra weapons that we're putting on the aircraft increases the flexibility and allows us to hit a, a greater range of targets. So really important for our customers that we get, a, uh, get these weapons onto the aircraft. Uh, so Striker, Striker 2 helmet is great, and, and we're saying this is great current technology. Where do we go to now with it? Yeah, so um, the Striker 2 is a development of the current Striker in operation. So Striker 2 adds a digital night sensor. So now I get a wide field of regard, digital night picture. So rather than having to, to uh, uh, strap on MBGs, which are obviously heavy and cumbersome, um, actually it's just all part of the helmet now. Literally one flick of the switch, I get a wide field of regard night sensor. So that's very much the near term. We're just in flight tests with that. Actually, if we just move over here, we can look at some of the future technologies that we're looking at with Striker and the extra information that we can plug in. So as we develop the sensors, such as the e-scan radar model you can see just behind you, that's going to generate a huge amount of extra data uh, on the battlefield, on the various uh, threat systems out there. And we want to put some of that information now into the cockpit in an innovative way. So what we're looking at with Striker is actually, with a full color digital helmet, there's a lot more information I can, uh, I can put into the helmet. So let's have a look at some of that. So, as I put the helmet on, you'll see a representation of what I'm seeing on the visor. So, although that, what, everything that's on that image there, on the TV, is on my visor in front of my eyes. So you'll see as I look left, I can look down, look at different uh, elements, and I can get extra information, bring that up. As I look up, looking through the flight path, this is a representation of enemy surface to air missile systems so that you can see I can now project onto the visor for the pilot information about threat systems and that allows me to maneuver the aircraft very safely. If I'm impacting those threat systems I can make it responsive and I can show that any suppression effects I'm having on those, on those threat systems are uh, given to me live in cockpit. So huge, uh, huge information uh, looking forwards. Enemy aircraft, if I've got uh, vision equipment and get picture in picture I can bring up extra information on the enemy aircraft. And all I'm doing here is, rather than just a normal queuing system, I'm actually using my head movements to queue uh, extra information. As I look down, I can now have virtual displays. So I'm not limited to the, the hardware in front of me. I can actually pick up displays, move them around, drop them, add extra information, use the virtual space rather than actually be limited to the hardware in front of me. So you can see it gives me a huge amount of flexibility in the information that's presented to me as the pilot. So that's the near-term future for Typhoon. It gives you that flexibility. Doesn't it add significantly to your, your workload and, and, the, and the pressure of doing your job? So that's where we get the feedback from pilots like myself or from our other test pilots and working with our human factors guys so that we actually manage that workload so that we give the pilot only the information he needs at that appropriate point. We'll do some of that automatically, intelligently, and we'll just give the pilot flexibility through the hands-on throttle of the stick to actually control that information and, and uh, filter it appropriately so that the pilot gets just what he needs. And Paul, when do we actually see this coming through to Typhoon pilots? So the Striker 2 helmet in flight test right now, the, uh, some of our customers have just been looking at it. So we'd expect that to be uh, hitting the front line somewhere around 18 months time from now. 
This extra information, well really that uh, depends on the customer's demands. And what we're doing is trying to give the customer as many different options with Typhoon as possible to exploit the data that the aircraft is now generating. So something like this, well perhaps two to three years away, depending on what the customer requirement is, what the, uh, um, what the, the tactical scenario uh, drives you know, from, the, from where the customers are operations. Thank you.